So as this uh, juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma is now considered as a surgical entity, all other treatment modalities have got an adjuvant uh, treatment value only. So in non-surgical adjuvant therapy, the first one is uh, embolization. Okay. So non-surgical methods. Uh, treatment options. The first come is embolization. This is usually done in the preoperative phase. And uh, uh, the thing is, the basic, in simple terms, what is embolization? That is, there is a uh, tumor, and from the tumor, you you know that this is highly vascular mass, and there is there will be a uh, feeder vessel to this. So, actually we block this feeder vessel using something. Okay. So that we will block it. So that blood supply to this uh, angiofibroma is reduced. Or uh, so that the at the time of surgery the dissection will be comparatively easy. And the intraoperative blood loss will be less. Okay. So, Three things you have to remember in relation to embolization. That is, when will we do this? That is important. When? Then, what are the materials used for this embolization? What? What are the materials used in it? And then, how? Obviously, how will we do a embolization? So, when, what and how is very important. So, the thing, when will you do this? So, at the earliest... 24 to 48 hours before surgery. Okay, so you have to do this 24 to 48 hours before surgery. Maximum 48 hours. What will happen the, if this uh, embolization is done one week or three days or four days prior to surgery? What will happen? There will be always there is new angiogenesis. So, anastomotic channels will occur okay to this uh, tumor bypassing the embolized area so new vessel formation or collateral blood vessels will develop from the feeder vessel due to new uh, angiogenesis so that the whole thing will be waste of time or waste of energy and everything so it should be done within 24 to 48 hours before surgery preoperatively okay and now uh, what are the materials used usually we have two types of uh, embolization. One is the conventional um, trans arterial embolization, and another one is direct therapeutic embolization. Also, these are the two methods. So, the answer to how is these two? There can be two methods one is a conventional trans arterial embolization, and another one is direct puncture therapeutic embolization, commonly known as DPTA. TE. Okay. This is actually a recent advance in this field. So the usual using what? The answer to this is usually gelatin sponge, teflon particles, gel form, polyvinyl alcohol, silk, cyanoacrylate, sodium tetradactyl, sulfate, muscle fragments, etc. And ideally 300 to 500 micrometers. 300 to 500 micrometer particles are preferred because they have got a better uh, this uh, vascular lumen blocking capacity okay and ideally this should be uh, done 24 to 48 hours before this planned surgery and this is usually done in advanced tumors okay so that is regarding trans arterial embolization and direct puncture therapeutic embolization the materials used are different uh, and also for this there can be some complications okay this can go um, the complications are known if the uh, embolizing materials to if you do to the internal carotid artery especially to internal carotid artery so the complications can happen as cerebral ischemia or can be vision loss or rarely there can be cerebral edema aphasia hemiplegia also so the complications are mostly known if it goes to internal carotid artery like uh, cerebral ischemia, aphasia, then vision loss, etc. Okay, 
And regarding direct pharmacy therapeutic embolization, embolizing agent is different from this. It is actually a mixture of N-butyl cyanoacrylate, N-butyl cyanoacrylate plus lipidion with or without absolute alcohol. Okay. So this irreversible embolizing agent is directly injected into the uh, tumor. Under fluoroscopic control, this agent is in injected directly into the tumor by either a percutaneous uh, route or transnasal or transoral or transpalatal route. Okay. So percutaneously, transnasally, transorally or transparently, this agent is uh, directly injected into the tumor. So that this will cause irreversible occlusion of the tumor uh, microvasculature. And because there is tungsten powder, this tumor tissue will have a blackish color. So that at the time of surgery, the tumor can be easily identified from the surrounding tissue. Okay. Because this tungsten powder will give a blackish color, this tumor tissue will be easily identifiable because of its black, uh, blackish color. So uh, this can be done alone. Or it is more preferred method is a combination of this transatlantic embolization along with the direct puncture therapeutic embolization, and this one is a uh, newer concept. One more thing is that this uh, direct uh, alcohol, absolute alcohol, has got a direct cytotoxic effect, so that it gives a good therapeutic effect also in case of JN. Okay, so that is regarding embolization, and the next. Uh, Non-surgical adjuvant method is hormonal therapy or you can call it as a chemotherapy. Chemotherapy or hormonal therapy. What are the hormones? So while discussing on the theories of origin of angiofibroma, I told you that there is an interplay between androgen and estrogen. So you can give either estrogen or you can give anti-androgen. Okay, so or anti androgen both uh, you can give both both has got therapeutic effect. So if you give exogenous estrogen, what will happen? So the vascularity will be reduced and also the size of tumor will reduce. But we are not preferring this because one is there is lack of a conclusive therapeutic benefit of giving estrogen. Second is it can cause feminizing side effects and also there is chance of cardiovascular side effects. So this estrogen is not at all preferred nowadays. And under anti-androgen uses flutamide. Basically this is used in case of carcinoma prostate. This is a non-steroidal androgen uh, blocking drug, non-steroidal androgen receptor blocking drug and this will act by blocking testosterone, the action of testosterone. So they, basically this is used in case of uh, CA prostate and in JNA this can be given in case of intracerebral or intraocular or in case of recurrent tumors or in tumors having blood supply primarily from internal carotid artery. In these cases, a 6 weeks course of this flutamide is given preoperatively. Okay. In case of uh, extensive intracerebral or intraocular or recurrent lesions or lesions blood supply primarily from internal carotid artery, you have to give flutamide for preoperatively 6 weeks so that the size of the tumor will be reduced and the Surgery will be comparatively easy with reduced blood loss. And this flutamide is a non-steroidal androgen receptor blocking drug and it will act by blocking testosterone. Okay. The next uh, uh, adjuvant therapy is uh, radiotherapy, RT. So this is done especially in cases of very advanced tumors with intracranial extension which is not amenable for a primary surgery. So in this case, we give a uh, radiation dose of around uh, 30 to 55 grays 
over a period of uh, three weeks. Some textbooks take it as 30 to 35 only. Over a period of three weeks we give and the success uh, or a response is taken as reduced size of the tumor and also reduced vascularity over a period of several months. And that will happen, that is a positive response can happen in around 80% of patients. And if there is no response even after two years, it is taken as RT failure uh, and these patients, in that case, these patients can be taken up for a salvage therapy. If there is RT failure, it is an indication for a salvage surgery. Okay. And in RT also there are so many complications. And what are the complications of this? Complications. Complications of RT. I already told you that RT is indicated in cases of extensive intracranial extension of JNA in which the primary surgery is not amenable. So that this uh, uh, inside the cranial cavity and also orbit is uh, very much exposed to radiation. So that in the eye you can have uh, posterior lens capsular opacity, glaucoma and also otic nerve atrophy is common. And serostomia can occur as in all other cases. And inside the cranial cavity, hypopituitarism, cerebral necrosis, osteoradio necrosis of, of mandible. Okay, osteoradio necrosis of mandible. Then skull base osteomyelitis. And also there is chance of development of new head and neck malignancies and also potential malignant transformation of this DNA. It is also possible with an RT. So that there are uh, newer modalities of, uh, less complicated modalities of radiation. One is an intensity modulated radiation therapy, IMRT, or it can be a gamma knife, or it can be a cyber knife. All these can be asked as separate, separate short notes. Okay. What is this IMRT? This is uh, done in so many other areas also, not only uh, JNA. In so many other areas we are doing IMRT. That is a high dose of radiation is given to that particular uh, target area with the uh, sparing of surrounding vital structures. So that the, if uh, this is DNA and uh, the higher intensity, higher intensity beams are coming from so many areas and they are converging on the tumor tissue with sparing of all other neighboring vital structures. That is the basis of this IMRT. And uh, what is gamma knife? And this gamma knife is almost similar to IMRT, but here a number of 201, okay, target sites. This is coming from 201, sorry, it is 201. Okay, so these radiation beams are coming from 201 sources and it is concentrating or pointing to the target lesion so that there will be further retardation of growth of this uh, angiofibroma. So that is gamma knife. Cyber knife is a type of stereotactic radio surgery in which we are using robotic arms to deliver this uh, uh, adequate amount of radiation to the target area. So it is a type of stereotactic radio surgery in which robotic arms are used to deliver this radiation. And so that again the shrinkage of this particular uh, lesion will occur and it is used along with other treatment modalities to write, uh, reduce the size of the tumor. So in RT you have to know the conventional uh, dose, the complications and what is IMRT, gamma knife and also cyber knife. So with this, this uh, treatment modalities are over. Uh, I told about the surgical approaches both open and um, endoscopic and non-surgical adjuvant therapy, one is embolization, then hormonal or chemotherapy and radiation. Or you can also use a combination of all this, especially in preoperative period, we give uh, embolization for larger tumors followed by surgery or this all, uh, all this chemotherapy or radiation or a combination of all these can be given usually preoperatively. Okay. And now I will tell you what are the surgical approaches for an open um, surgery for JNA.